proof of sound disposed in mind to prove the mental capacity of the testator reliance may be placed on either of both of a the presumption of a sound disposed in mind b positive affirmative evidence of a sound mind presumption of sound disposed in mind there is a general presumption that a testator was seen at the time he makes his will the presumption of sound mind is based on the view that where a will appears ex facto rational and logical it will be presumed to be so thus where there is no suspicion attached to a will the court will presume the document as all right unless there are other evidence to disprove the presumption thus omnia presumuntur right as a actor everything is presumed to be okay which looks okay okay lola and boil supra where there is suspicion or the will is not ex facto regular or where the testator suffers from some form of disability such as deafness, blindness or illiteracy, the maximum will not apply. If the state of mind of the testator is contested, the onus probandi is on the propounder of the will to establish that the will was duly executed and this is usually done by showing that the will is rational on its face or he may decide to advance positive affirmative evidence in support of the testator's state of mind. After this is done, the onus shifts to the challenger who must adduce evidence to show that despite the fact that the will is rational on its face and duly executed, the testator was insane at the time that the will was made Johnson and Marja. Positive affirmative evidence. In addition or as alternative to the presumption of sound mind, the propounder may lead positive affirmative evidence to prove that the testator has a sound disposing mind. This evidence may be oral or documentary. Examples of such evidence include a evidence that the will was written by the testator or that the instructions were written by him which could be handwritten or made by the testator in any form. b evidence of attesting witnesses which should of course be corroborated c medical evidence by doctors who have examined the testator d evidence of the conduct of the testator before and after the making of the will e evidence of general habits and course of life of the testator in adebajo and adebajo the court relied on the evidence of the general habits and course of life of the testator to hold that the testator had the requisite testamentary capacity vitiating factors the factors which may vitiate the validity of a will include the following a delusion b undue influence c fraud d mistake e suspicious circumstances delusion this is a belief which no rational person can hold but it forms part of the reasoning of the testator he cannot eradicate it from his mind and it is capable of influencing the provision of his will Delusion can be further subdivided into delusion of the grandeur, a conception of a disordered mind which imagines facts to exist of which there is no evidence, e.g. Barack Obama was at my house today and Michelle Obama is my secretary. It is presenting oneself to appear more than who the person is. Delusion of the mentally ill, a mental disease or infirmity, there must be a nexus between the delusion and the disposition of the will religious delusion e.g. where a certain woman had the belief that she was of the trinity was a bride of god and her husband was a devil be under influence to make a will a man must be a free agent all and all under influence is coercion to make a will in a particular way it occurs where the testator's mind has been subjected to any improper persuasion or machination in such a way that he is overpowered and consequently induced to do or forbear an act. Undue influence must be proven and not presumed. Very important, undue influence should be differentiated from persuasion. Persuasion appeals to the affection or ties of kindred to a sentiment of gratitude for past services or pity e.g. where a man deprives his wives of benefit and gives generously to his mistress Johnson and Marja Supra. C. Fraud Where this is successfully proven, it has a tendency to invalidate a will in all its entirety. The mistake of law This may not be fatal to the validity of a will, but the mistake of fact will be fatal to the will. 
A good example is where the state of Mr. Kungazi from Kiri in the course of devolving his property. He suspicious circumstances. A substantial gift made to his solicitor who prepares a will raises serious suspicion. The court will normally look at the quantum provision of the gift, i.e. the entire disposition of the property. A good example is where a lawyer benefits from a will. Requirement of a valid will. 1. It must be in writing. Section 9 of the Wills Act. There is no particular form of writing the will. It may be typed, printed, and written, or a combination of all of these. It is also not compulsory that the language with which a will should be written should be English language. In the case of Whiting and Turner, the court has held that a will that is written in French language is valid. 2. A will must be signed by the testator. The signature may be an initial, a cross, or a rubber stamp. The signature must be what the testator intends it to be and it must be complete. For the purpose of a will, signature does not include sealing, Ellis and Smith. However, in the case of goods of Emerson, sealing coupled with initials on the seal was held as signing. In the estate of Randall, the court held that a thumb impression is acceptable as a signature. Where the testator is illiterate or blind, a jury should be inserted indicating that the contents of the will were first read and interpreted to them and they perfectly understood it before affixing their signature. The testator may also acknowledge the signature in the presence of two witnesses. In this case, he would have signed the will when no one was present and thereafter acknowledges to have made the signature in the presence of witnesses. Very important, the testator may authorize another person in his presence and by his direction to sign the will on his behalf with the intention of giving effect to the writing on the will as his own signature. Under the Wills Act of 1837, a will must be signed at the foot or at the end of the will. Any will that does not comply with this requirement will be held to be invalid. Section 9 of the Wills Act. This position has thus been ameliorated and amended by Section 1 of the Wills Amendment Act of 1852. It provides that the testator may sign at any other place on the will so long as it is apparent that he intended to give effect to the will by appending his signature on it. In the goods of Osborne, probate was granted a will in which the signature was made at the side of the margin. Very important. In all cases, the testator must sign before the witness is signed, and in order to avoid fraud, any disposition or direction which is underneath or follows the testator's signature is void. 3. Attestation by the witnesses. The signature of the testator must be made or acknowledged by him in the presence of at least two witnesses who must both be present at the same time. Words are not necessary for attestation. Ize Yamu and Alongi 2007. All Federation with Law Report, Part 371, page 1570. The witnesses must be present at the same time, though they may not be present when each of them is signing. The presence of witnesses here is physical and simultaneous. When the testator signs or acknowledges his signature, a witness must sign in his own hand and cannot direct another person to sign on his behalf as a witness. Witnesses as beneficiaries of a will. 1. A person attesting a will cannot benefit under the will. Any gift made to such a person will be utterly null and void. 2. The disqualification of gifts to beneficiary witness extends to the spouse of such witness, i.e. the spouse of a witness to a will cannot take benefit under the will. A benefiting witness is only disqualified from taking the gifts made under the will but is a competent witness to testify on the facts of due execution of the will, where the will is still duly executed, if the signature of the beneficiary witness is disregarded, the witness cannot benefit from the gifts made in the will. A perfect example is where there are three witnesses and no one benefits from the will. Exceptions A. Wills that do not require witnesses, e.g. soldiers in active military service. B. Where a beneficiary names a witness after executing the will. C. Where the gift in the will is confirmed by another will or codice which is not attested to by the beneficiary. D. Where the person present merely signs that he agrees with the content of the will but not as a witness. E. Where the gifts are given to persons in their capacity as trustees and not beneficiaries. 
capacity of a blind person to make a wheel. A blind person can make a wheel, but it must be shown that the wheel was read over to him and he understands the content before fixing his hands to it. A special attestation clause must be inserted to the wheel as evidence of having read the wheel to him. It is called blind person's jurat. A blind person cannot attest a wheel because his disability makes it impossible for him to see the signature of the testator and the whole act of signing the document. Ethical issues 1. Counsel should ensure that he represents his client within the bounds of the law and should make sure that he does not contravene the law with 15 of the rules of professional conduct. 2. A lawyer should ensure that he does not collude with a beneficiary to alter or destroy a will. 3. Duty not to take undue benefit from a client's property. Rule 23 of the rules of professional conduct. 4. Where a lawyer is a beneficiary under a will, he should advise the testator to engage the services of another lawyer to draft the will. 5. The lawyer also has a duty not to charge exorbitant fees, Rule 48 of the Rules of Professional Conduct. 6. The lawyer has a duty to take instructions in writing. 7. A lawyer owes the client a duty of confidentiality, Rule 19 of the Rules of Professional Conduct. 9. He owes the client a duty to disclose any conflict of interest, Rule 17 of the Rules of Professional Conduct. 10. The lawyer has a duty not to take instructions in a client's house except in special circumstances, Rule 22 of the Rules of Professional Conduct. 11. He should advise his client on who can be his executor. 12. It is only the duty of a lawyer to ensure that all the beneficiaries are catered for. 13. It is also the duty of the lawyer to advise the client on the fact that a beneficiary should not be a witness during the execution of the will. There are two terms with which gifts under a will are associated. They are 1. Legacies, 2. Devices. Legacies refer to movable and personal gifts. Perfect examples are money and choices in action. The beneficiary of such gifts is referred to as the legacy. Devices, on the other hand, refers to gifts of immovable or interesting land. The beneficiary of such property is referred to as the devisee. However, legacy is now used to refer to books, movable and immovable gifts. Gifts may be specific, general, demonstrative, pecuniary or residuary. Quick last note is powered by Rooms and Luxury, your choice real estate agency in Lagos, Nigeria. Address is number 7 Tower Corny Close of Ili Mike Crescent, Igwe Fon, Lekki, Lagos, Nigeria. Tell WhatsApp 81 0814275425091569137. And send your emails to Rooms and Luxury at gmail.com. Instagram Rooms and Luxury, Facebook Rooms and Luxury. And call them for all your real estate questions. For sponsorship and advert placements, please contact 091-259-21620 or send an email to resistance partners.chambers at gmail.com.